This is English shorthand dictation number 184 and the dictation speed is 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. On the income tax day this year, finance minister singled out individual taxpayers for praise. She lauded honest taxpayers for their contribution to nation building and said that it needs to be recognized indeed they have been the bulwark of the indirect tax system last fiscal year when corporate tax collections collapsed the personal income tax collection level held firm it exceeded corporate tax collections for the first time in this century honest taxpayers will be best rewarded if those evading taxes are caught and made to pay their fair share india has a personal income tax base heavily dependent on the salaried class last year more than 65 million income tax returns were filed which is less than 10% of india's adult population everyone who files income tax return is not necessarily a taxpayer evidence suggests that income tax data is not in sync with the pattern of consumption for example in 2018-19 only 5 million individuals declared an income of over rupees 10 lakh in the same year 3.5 million new cars were sold other consumption data tell the same tale salaried individuals bear a disproportionate burden of nation building income tax authorities make plenty of noises about catching non salaried individuals in the tax net but results have been disappointing under declaration of income and over declaration of expenses are widespread and somehow income tax department seems unable to consistently track hidden personal income via consumption expenditure now that large cash transactions are supposedly considerably fewer than before this seems even more surprising the bigger reform is to scrap an income tax code that is a patchwork of incremental changes and lacks overall coherence Almost 2 years ago a task force appointed by government of India submitted its report on a new code to replace the existing law that needs to be unveiled and acted upon soon a touchy topic for the center and states has been the counting of the dead from covid-19 in 2020 as the pandemic ravaged europe and the united states health ministry officials would incessantly argue that india had better managed the pandemic because its deaths per million of population were comparatively lower while factually true it was always apparent that the argument was specious given the size demographic difference and india's per capita access to quality health care but the ferocious second wave in april and may characterized by the very visible scenario of hospitals being overrun and the sick gasping for a very basic necessity of medical oxygen revealed a spike in excess deaths compared to the normal death rate in previous years even though independent databases show large spikes in deaths with no other explicable cause than covid-19 the center continues to be in denial of the mortal scale of the pandemic the statement given by minister of state for health and family welfare in the rajya sabha that there were no specific reports of deaths from states due to lack of oxygen led congress leaders to say that the party will move a privilege motion against her Indeed it is the absolute lack of empathy or acknowledgement of the lived experience of many who have watched their near and dear ones suffer and die for want of medical oxygen that makes the minister's statement appalling
it is technically true that while no death certificate or medical record would note a COVID-19 patient's demise as due to lack of oxygen, the very fact that the center moved in April and May to repurpose all its industrial oxygen capacity into producing and transporting medical grade oxygen is itself evidence that the inability to access it must be considered as a probable cause of death. In the early days of the pandemic, a COVID positive test was necessary to count as a COVID-19 death until the Indian Council of Medical Research said it was not always required. It is perplexing why India sees value in denying casualties resulting from shortage of oxygen despite having the third highest number of COVID-19 deaths globally and its oxygen crisis becoming international news. It diminishes public faith in the healthcare system. India's leadership sought to convey the impression that the country had conquered the pandemic and is now advising abundant caution with the public messaging focused on the possibility of a third wave and how nearly a third of the population continues to be vulnerable as per the Indian Council of Medical Research's fourth serology survey. But diminishing the tragedy, especially in Parliament and in its official records, only further erodes the government's credibility. The Finance Ministry has put to rest all speculation about the inflation targeting framework that will guide the interest rate decisions of the Reserve Bank of India's Monetary Policy Committee over the five-year period. In a terse notification, the Department of Economic Affairs announced that the inflation target for the five-year period ending on 31st March 2026 will be 4% with an upper tolerance level of 6% and a lower tolerance level of 2%. Economic Affairs Secretary said that the framework's parameters would remain unchanged from what had prevailed in the five years that ended on March 31. The government's announcement is a welcome step in reiterating that inflation targeting remains the centerpiece of the monetary policy framework and signals that the fiscal and monetary authorities are in lockstep in ensuring the primacy of price stability as the bedrock for all macroeconomic development. This is particularly befitting at a time when inflation pressures are mounting in an economy that is still struggling to regain its footing from the devastating contraction in the just-ended fiscal year when the COVID-19 pandemic and the drastic measures to curb its spread resulted in widespread precarity. The latest consumer price index shows retail inflation accelerated by almost 100 basis points to a three-month high of 5% in February, with food and fuel costs continuing to remain volatile. With the prices of multiple raw materials on an upward trajectory, companies are planning to raise selling prices over the coming 12 months to cope with rising costs. The Reserve Bank of India's officials have in recent months maintained an unwavering focus on emphasizing the need to retain the flexible inflation targeting framework. In a working paper released in December, the Deputy Governor overseeing monetary policy and a colleague underscored the importance of ensuring the appropriateness of the inflation target, observing that the there had been a steady decline in trend inflation to around 4% since 2014. They set a target far lower than the trend ran the risk of imparting a deflationary bias that would dampen economic momentum, while a goal much above the trend could engender expansionary monetary conditions that would likely lead to inflation shocks. In February, the Reserve Bank of India's researchers made it clear that the framework had served the economy well. 
attested by a decline in inflation volatility and more credible anchoring of inflation expectations. The fact that the government's economic officials have heeded these calls will certainly reassure investors and savers that inflation remains a central concern for all policy makers.